Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everyone. I, I truly believe ever since COVID, many of us have reevaluated our life, reevaluated our purpose, reevaluated our career. Are you happy doing what you're doing? Is this something that you've been thinking about? Maybe changing careers, maybe walking up the ladder a few notches in terms of what you're doing now. For that, there's help to navigate, walk that journey with you, everything from the resume, career counseling, job searching, and so much more. And this gentleman is with a company that has helped thousands of people navigate that. Uh, often a challenge to so many different pieces, and it's so well worth it working with someone because this is your career. Uh, a lot at stake here. Companies called Career Development Resources. Mark Berkowitz is with us today. Hey, Mark, how you doing? No, doing real well. Glad to be with you. Yeah, good to have you here. This is, I have friends, I have colleagues, have wrestled with this in the past year in terms of job searching, resume preparation, all of this. Um, you, you got one company that does it all. That's fantastic. <laughs> it really is. What are some of the other services that I haven't mentioned so far? Okay, well, we got the resume writing. Uh, the career counseling breaks down into a couple of other things. Uh, some of it might be, I hate to use the word testing. I prefer assessment instruments, but, you know, helping somebody get the uh, necessary information to make a good, realistic career decision. Uh, typically, people will present with, gee, I'm really not sure what I'd be happy with versus I'm not sure what I'd be good at, versus I'm not sure uh, what I'd be interested in, versus something that, you know, is going to mesh with my own personal values. So part of what I do is try and get to where the brick wall is with somebody in terms of if they were about to make a decision, let's say oh, in the next 40 days or so, what's the hangup from actually jumping in and making that decision. And broadly, it breaks down into one of those kinds of questions. So fortunately, there are different types of assessments that help provide the answers to each of them. So some of it is helping somebody get a handle on what kind of a direction to be looking into. Uh, in some cases, it's more into the job search coaching in terms of how do we go about doing this? And our statistics are showing that uh, the vast amount of uh, Americans, you know, spend 80% of their time and effort into job search channels that generally get them only 20% or less of the results. So how do we manage that? Well, we can do things in a number of different ways. And frequently, I'll have people start off with the easy way. Okay, how do people typically find jobs? Well, used to be the help wanted ads. These days, it's the online variety. But there isn't any rhyme or reason as to how a position is classified or what do they call the job title. You know, should I look under C for cop, D for detective, I for investigator, L for law enforcement? On a good day, just in, in that field, I can do at least 18 of them. You know, so I'll tell people, well, we need to go looking through from A to Z so you're not ruling out anything. Okay, we want to expand the horizons before we start to narrow the focus. There's so much at stake here. There's so many little nuances. Uh, why don't we look at resumes? There's, it's not uh, the way it used to be back in the day. And we have access to so much in terms of graphic programs to make it look fantastic, but not always necessary because a lot of them are being scanned. Nobody's even looking at the resume at that point. Uh, enlighten us on that, please. Okay. Well, firstly, uh, there's a lot of information out there, and some of it is incredibly questionable. Back in the day, going back to uh, the 80s and early 90s, uh, a woman had a book out called 200 Damn Good Resumes. And then we get 200 you know, more damn good resumes. And it was a general all-purpose book. However, an accountant's resume shouldn't look or sound like a nurse's resume. 
you know, versus a sales manager's resume versus a teacher's resume. So uh, one of the publishers has been very, very good in terms of uh, pinpointing particular fields that have, you know, commonalities to it, because there's no such thing as a one size fits all resume. And, you know, here you have people saying, oh, you should never use an objective. It's passe. It's old. Uh, nobody uses them anymore. However, you know, somebody first entering the job market, you can't call yourself an experienced professional. Mm. So an impactful uh, objective that states what the field or the job title is they're looking stating that it will benefit from specific types of experience, specific types of uh, skill set in order to, and, you know, deliver a payoff on there, definitely sells, okay? Uh, there's one gal out there, uh, I believe she works at MIT, and all of her advice is really targeted towards, you know, high-tech, informational services type of stuff, and for somebody that just graduated with a, uh, you know, bachelor in business administration, you know, the advice isn't going to be uh, what they really need to help market themselves. So the first thing is to, you know, really get a handle on what exactly is needed from somebody that's uh, relevant. And I'm seeing a lot of stuff coming from the college campuses these days uh, that's at least 20 years, you know, behind the curve. Well, you got to have one inch of white space on each of all four yes. margins. Otherwise, we're not going to let you participate in on-campus recruiting. And I frequently will then take a resume that I've written and dummy it down so they can show career services, get the stamp of approval. And when they go and they're meeting with the business representatives you know, uh, for this on-campus recruiting, they got the real thing. You know, which wow. is helping them get their foot in the door. And one of the things that I don't hear really anybody else mentioning is that the resume actually becomes a blueprint for the interview process for when we get there. Okay, there are a lot of us that really don't have much of a bragging bone in our bodies. We've grown up where, and I've worked with people from lots and lots of different backgrounds, different nationalities, and generically mom, while we're growing up, teaches us stuff like it's not nice to toot your own horn. Mm. It's rude to pat yourself on the back. It's not nice to brag. But if we're not going to do that for ourselves, who's going to do it? So one of my strategies is to have things on the resume that will pretty much lead the interviewer by the nose into asking the kind of question that in essence is saying to the candidate, would you please brag for us? Oh, it says here that you did this really interesting thing. How did that come about? Or what did your boss say when you proposed, you know, that innovative suggestion? Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> interesting. Um, even call it psychology in terms well, of, Really uh, planning the way the interview is going to go based on the way the resume looks. Back in the day, uh, you know, you looked at the resume as it's what gets your foot in the door. It's what gets you the invite to the interview. And, oh, I don't know, 30 some odd years ago, here somebody uh, calls me up late on a Friday and they need a resume because they've got an interview the next day. Wow. Okay, and they, they need the resume. And back then I said, well, you know, the resume, you know, uh, gets you the invite to the interview. You've already got that. So what you really need to do is go in there and sell yourself. Okay, well, my philosophies have evolved with my experience and the levels of expertise. And, you know, we really want that uh, document to pretty much guide where that interview is going. What about the keywords? That's that's what I'm hearing very much lately that you really need to put the proper words in. It's not even about the layout so much. It's those words when you apply for, you know, medium, large size company, they just put it through a process. I, I forget ACT or I can't remember what the acronym is for the uh, program or the scanner, but that's what they're looking at. Uh, ATS, Applicant Tracking System. There you go. It is the generic <laughs> name for it. 
Uh, well, yeah, you definitely need to have the right keywords. Uh, step one is to literally mine the job posting or the help wanted ad and make sure we've got the same kind of verbiage that they're looking for. Because if they're looking for particular uh, qualifications, you want to show that you're just what the doctor ordered. Uh, hmm. The other thing is research the different positions, uh, different companies might use a different job title for the very same uh, job. Uh, one company's financial analyst is another company's business analyst. And you look at the help wanted ads and they're identical. You look at the job descriptions, they're identical. So what we want to do is make sure we're covering the bases because even though we might not have somebody actually flipping the pages to look at the resume and it's being done uh, via the computer, uh, the more hits that that file, of course, the com computer doesn't know that it's a resume, it's just a file, but the more hits it gets electronically, it comes closer to the top of the stack in terms of relevance. So we want to make sure that we're in there and want to make sure that we have plenty of them that are noun based. Ah. Okay. You know, in years past, everybody was really, uh, big into action verbs, which are important, but now we need to have those, uh, you know, keywords that are in there. We want to make sure that the document becomes keyword searchable. Also, what about when we go back to, you know, patting yourself on the back, touting your, your accomplishments, um, instead of telling somebody that, you know, driven individual, blah, 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 blah. It's more about what did you do? Took, took this company from here to there, things like that. Is that a, important to make sure that we're mindful of? Yes, it definitely is. And there are a number of different ways we can do it without sounding like a braggart. You know, one of them is, okay, you know, uh, here's a typical kid, uh, you know, coming out of a, uh, you know, a business degree program from a college and they've done some sort of uh, group project. What were we recognized for? Were we, and now we've got the statements such as recognized as the go-to person for, I don't know, developing, you know, whiz-bang Excel spreadsheet formulas, that type of thing. You know, recognized for the ability to close sales, achieve the reputation as thus and such. And sometimes uh, without necessarily mentioning a person by name, you can use their job title, you know, uh, commended by district manager for the ability to consistently hmm. deliver the goods. Wow. Um, so never thought it, to, to refocus it that way. Well, it, it's really important that uh, we make use of psychology. And if somebody else thinks you're good, you're good. Doesn't matter how good I think I am. If somebody else thinks I'm good, okay, you know, then that helps uh, elevate the stature. And in some cases on resumes, I might have uh, a column just off the left margin, which might be excerpted quotes, you know, which could be from, uh, if this is a teacher, it could be from the parents, you know, mm. commending that person for what they did uh, for their uh, school age child. Uh, it could be from a coworker, it could be from a customer. And again, we're delivering the idea of somebody else thinks you're good. And it's the same psychology that restaurants use. I mean, if you're one of the early diners in that restaurant, where do they tend to seat you? Right by the window. So passerby on the sidewalk, will see people sitting there and, oh, hey, this place must be pretty good. Let's go in and try it. Even though you might be the only person in the restaurant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, that answer, you, you, you answered a question before you even got to it. And that was call them testimonials uh, on your resume. How, while we're, while we're in a resume territory, what about the cover letter? Still needed, still effective. What does today's cover letter look like? If so. Well, uh, many years ago, I was taught there are only, you know, two chances to sell yourself into the interview. And one is the resume. The other is the cover letter. 
the next question that comes up, well, which is more important? And okay, well, my dad was from Brooklyn, so I'll answer that question with a question, okay? If you were running to catch a train, which is more important, your right leg or your left leg? Obviously, you need both to get the job done, mm. okay? So you'd want that uh, cover letter to be designed to really mesh well with the resume. It needs to be able to sell. It needs to be able to say, here, Mr. and Ms. Potential Employer, here's what you get from me, okay? Here's what I can do for you. And hopefully the candidate has done a little bit of research to see what types of problems their target company has been facing, in which case they can now answer uh, those needs with, hey, I'm the answer to your prayers. I'm you know, exactly what the doctor ordered. Or to get the thing that they have that comes the closest to that, rather than, hey, I'm just looking for a job and a paycheck. You know, I'm looking to do a job. I want to help this company be better. So the the software that scans your resume, does it also scan your cover letter? Some of them do. And you can use some of the very same resume strategies on the cover letter. Okay. And one of the things that we want to try and do is not to sound self-centered. So using I and me too many times, you know, makes it all about me as opposed to Mr. and Ms. Potential Employer, here's what I can do for you. So we could have an introductory statement, you know, uh, showing that, hey, you know, uh, my qualifications are a really great match for your stated needs. You'll note that I have and bullet point and here we have uh, what could be things lifted right from the resume that are stating what they've done and what some sort of measurable achievement was without needing to keep saying I and me. With uh, jumping back to the resumes, one of the things that works the best with any of those bullet point statements is a very simple formula. And depending on which school of resume writing you've come from, it's either PAR or CAR. Problem, action, result, and the other school replaces problem with challenge. So here's what we were faced with, here's what I did about it, and here's some kind of a result which we can quantify if we've mm -hmm. got access to numbers or we can qualify that it was a well-received suggestion. It was uh, a redesigning of a form that made it easier for patients to fill it out correctly the first time without needing a do-over. Gotcha. You know, so, you know it, it's not rocket science, but it, it takes a little bit of thought on there. And, and it, you know, and a lot of people just aren't thinking about themselves that way. That's I was just going to say that it's that's that's where the challenge is, because we don't look at it the way you look at it uh, as as somebody assisting somebody with the with the process of writing the, the, the resume and the cover letter. We're looking at it by I've got all this stuff. I need to put it down here, but I need to keep it. Effective and short. How about and this one? I always hear this come up. Dates of employment. How do we present that? Should we still present that when you worked from, you know, you know, month, year to month, year position? Is it still done that way? Yes, it is. Uh, most of the companies, their HR departments prefer the Harvard format, which has the dates in the left hand margin on there. Gotcha. So the start date to the end date. Uh, especially if you're looking to uh, get credit for all of your experience. And this is especially uh, thrown out to people who are just entering you know, the uh, job market for their first real professional job. You know, so each and every month you know, is just a little bit more valuable than somebody who has less experience on there. As far as the dates go, though, one of the things that we want people to watch out for 
is making it look like we're a job hopper when we're not. Mm. Such as, well, I've been with the company for 10 years and I got five promotions. Okay. If somebody's given your resume a really quick look and they see all those dates changing, they may not realize that it's all with the same company and each newer one is actually a promotion. So what my strategy is to put the overall dates of employment when they started through the present and working in reverse chronological order, here's the position that we had and to the right of the job title, I'll have the dates that we served under that title and so on and so forth. I have, have a question based on that. And this is a friend that asked me, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, she worked for a long time. Spouse passed away. <clears throat> then she took some time off. Two years. She was writing her resume to get back into the job market, but she felt odd that there was a gap in there. And then she took a small job after that. But there was a gap. And she was even thinking, well, can I just fudge something? <laughs> Worked as a bookkeeper for you for, for a couple of years. Is that a concern? Do people actually look at that and say, oh, wait a minute, what were they doing in between that time? Uh, what we want to do is address that particular gap in the employment history so as not to cause problems. Because inquiring minds will want to know, uh, were you incarcerated during right, those right, two right. years? <laughs> okay, were you in some sort of substance abuse rehab? Were you bouncing around in a rubber room? Right. As opposed to, uh, you know, I was home taking care of a sick parent, or I had uh, a client a number of years ago, never met her, from Texas, contacted me through AOL. At one point, I was one of the, quote, resume experts on AOL's online career center. And she uh, was home all those years taking care of a chronically ill daughter. Mm. And one of the things you know that I asked her is, how is your daughter doing now? What is her prognosis? So that on her resume, as well as the cover letter, she could say that during the, the uh the past two, three years, I was taking care of my chronically ill daughter who has made a full recovery and the prognosis is excellent. Therefore, we're planting the seeds that, uh, well, planting the seeds in the head of the employer, this person isn't gonna need to keep taking days off because their kid is sick and home from school. So you, you address it head on. Wow. Hey, mm -hmm. Nothing hidden up my sleeves. Here's what I was doing. Or maybe somebody was taking coursework to help improve their skills or sure. make them more valuable to the company, whether it's actual in-person workshops or online. And if somebody's out of work, I would really uh, encourage them to find something that they can then be working at to improve the skills so that you have something, not as just fluff or fill in, but you know something that will show that you use the time productively. You may not have been able to show up in the office five days a week for the full days, but here's what you were doing to keep current and improve your skills. Hopefully, you know coming in at the next level. Mark, great tips, <laughs> amazing. This is just a piece of of what you offer within the. Uh your career development uh, company. How do we find you? What's the best way to reach out? Somebody's got a question, wants to see if it's uh, the right fit for them? Well, uh, easiest thing and the most direct is telephone number. And I'm at area code 914-962-1548. Uh, you can find me at my website and I do have a uh, contact page where people will give me some information and tell me a little bit about what's going on so I might know how to help them. But the website is www.careerdevelopmentresource.com or uh, my email, an abbreviation of Career Development Resources, cardevres1 at hotmail.com. So that's C-A-R-D-E-V for Victor, R-E-S as in Sam, Cardev Res, the numeral one, no number sign, just the number one at, I'm sorry, at gmail.com. 
Oh, sorry. Hotmail used to Wait. be the old one. Well, I'm glad you didn't say AOL.com. <laughs> we've been talking about that before. Um, My wife refuses to give up AOL and it causes her so many problems. Yes, I know. I've got uh, one friend who's a medical professional, high level here, and he still has it. And that's you know, all good. But if I were looking for a job or looking at somebody and it said AOL.com, I might think they're a little you know, behind. Get a Gmail. Have the AOL forward to that board. That's just me. Um Wonderful having you here, Mark. A lot of great tips. There's so much to talk about, especially next time we get together. Looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, too. Thanks. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.